Okay, I'm waiting for notification on Facebook. Here we go. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have an incredible guest with us, um, Brother Abdullah Muhammad, one who's going to we look forward to getting some information from you as well as some inspiration, sir. And, and I'm truly humbled that you would take time out of your busy schedule to come on the People's Podcast, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, sir. Well, the first thing that we want to know is, um, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, sir? <clears throat> I would not be remiss, brother. I must say this. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. Yes, sir. To us, in the person of Master Farouk Muhammad, to whom we praise forever, who raised one from amongst us, the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad in day two have left with us a blessing, a divine reminder and guide, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. You say, when did I first, was, repeat that question again. I want to be yes, sir. When did you first hear the teaching, sir? I'm very humble again to be on this interview with you. When I first heard the teachings, I was probably before my adolescence because my dad owned a barbershop and in the barbershop he would receive weekly periodicals uh, black courier the black dispatch uh sipia jet magazine ebony magazine and there were articles in there by the honorable elijah muhammad some of those periodicals so i didn't realize what i was reading at the time but i was reading and as time went on into uh, adolescence and you know teenage and adulthood i was working at the local grocery store as a box boy. And one of the brothers that, that I knew uh, was more like a elder brother to me, he was a few years my senior. He took me into his home and he played an LP, a long playing record of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He says he wanted me to hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And the thing that amazed me about the LP was I couldn't, you know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad speaking what we call cryptic tones, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So I couldn't really understand every word that he was saying. What caught my attention was whenever he said something, it was just this great roar from the audience, from the believers, yes, right? And that's what caught my attention. So that was actually the first time I heard direct the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's voice. At the same time, during that time in the late 1950s, early 60s, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was, you know, always was controversial, but there were certain points of time that the newspapers would print certain things that were taking place with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in relationship to the public. And one of the things is that he told the newspaper people that if they could prove any one word that he said, he would, I think he said he paid $10,000 for each word that he said that was not true. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm reading, I'm, I'm reading the Caucasian newspaper every day. You know, I'm a student, you know, so yes, I'm, I'm in the reading thing. And that struck me because I'm, I'm looking for them to come back with this. You said this word and add up to $10,000, right? And that yes, never sir. happened. So that, that stuck with me. And then uh, the other part is they used to have a picture of, you no, know, it wasn't a picture of, but they said it was a picture of Master Father Muhammad in the newspaper, but it wasn't him. Mm. And then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, they said, well, he's, he's deceased. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, produce his body. Mm. So I'm, I'm looking for the Caucasian to come on, oh, produce the body. That never happened. They squashed it, right? Yes, sir. These things that, that struck me as, you know, my, in my latter, latter senior age. So, making a long story short, Brother, Shri, Brother Muhammad, Brother Joshua, uh, I was into, in high school and college, I was into the theater. Okay, okay. Graphic arts, I took journalism, I took drama in school, right? So, make a long story short, during the 1965 Watts 
a rebellion. They call it what's right, but it was a rebellion. Yes, sir. And the, there was the uh, type of forum that took place in the Los Angeles area. They called it confrontation. It was like an intelligent thing, right? Where people from the black community would interface with people from the Caucasian community because they wanted to quote unquote help, right? <laughs> so my mother, she informed me of a confrontation that was taking place in San Fernando Valley. That's where we were raised up in Woodland Hills. So I, I attended a confrontation, which, and the, you know, they always want to know, what do you do and uh, where, where do you live and you in school or blah, blah, blah. They want to know about you, right? So yes, people want to know about you. Just understand, it's good. Make a long story short, they informed me that there was a production of James Baldwin's play, Blues from Mr. Charlie, which was going to be the production in a place called Mill Valley, California, which, which is in Northern California, right across the bay from San Francisco. So I went there and uh, my ex-wife, myself, she was pregnant with, with uh, one of our children. And we did the show. We, the show was produced, went off well. But that took me across to the Bay Area where there was another show being produced by a theater company, which was a play by this French writer called Charles Genet, which the name of the play was Blacks and was something to deal with the Haitian Revolution, something like that. Okay. okay. To make a long story short, you know, they say, some people say that I saw him coming, or they see you coming, or they saw me coming. Yes, sir. Well, the director of the show saw me coming. But he, for some reason, there was some, there was some disenfranchisement. There was some grumbling amongst the cast. So I presented the grumbling to the director. So he boots me out the show. So make a long story short, that rolled me into the development of a local theater in the Fillmore District of San Francisco, along with two other brothers, and then. You know, other brothers came along. We found a theater which was called Black Arts West Repertory Theater School, which was, I don't want to use the, the term piggyback, but which was similar, was uh, uh, worn on the same trend as Brother Mary Baraka at that time, time, Leroy Jones on New York called Black Arts Repertory Theater School. Mm -hmm. So we established Black Arts West Repertory Theater School. We'll make a long story short. There was a brother that used that would come to our rehearsals, Alonzo uh, Eleven X. Uh, I believe that was his ex, brother Alonzo. He took the he took the holy name at that time back in the 1960s as B A T I N Batine. So mm -hmm. brother Alonzo Batine, which we know is one of the 99 attributes of God, a lot. Yes, sir. He made the inner and the outer, right? Yes, sir. He, he the brother have uh, made his transition some years ago. Well. Make a long story short, we were doing our shows, but after the show, you know, you sit around and cut around. We had our rehearsals and sit around and cut it up. Then he started teaching us. And this brother had recently come home from serving time in the penitentiary. And he was teaching us. When he would teach us, Brother Josh, I could hold a message to the black man in my hand, a message to the black man in America in my hand, and he was saying, teaching the message to the black man in America verbatim. So that's what he spent his time with, you know, sharpening his skills for when he came out on the street. So to make a long story short, he urged us to go to the mosque, which we did. But we were doing what we call, what people would call radical type theater. We were doing street theater, we were doing theaters in, in the, uh, nightclubs, we were doing theaters on college campuses. So brother told me, he said, brother, the Caucasian is going to kill you. Well, we were believers, right? He said, you better go to the mosque and seek refuge in Allah. So we were believers. So we went to the mosque and sought refuge in Allah. Yes, sir. And one of the beautiful things about it, the first time I went to the mosque was, as you know, when, when we uh, they ask you whoever uh, like what you heard and think is good for you and your people, they stand, raise your hand, right? Yes, sir. So we raised our hand. So then the minister said, who was Minister Henry Majid, may Allah be pleased with him. He says, the, the brothers 
you know, the brothers be on the front row and the brothers be on the back row. So we raised our hand. So said, if you believe what you heard is good for your people, then stand up. Well, I think we, we might have hesitated a little bit. The brothers in the back were saying, stand up. And the brothers in the front were saying, stand up. So we stood up. <laughs> From that point, I started processing. That was in uh, July 1966. So then, from that point, uh, you know, began studying and and um, we continued with our theater, but we changed our tone. What we did then, we instead of doing use a lot of profanity and using, uh, we never did really do a lot of denigrating the black one, but we did use profanity and we did, you know, uh, attack the system. But we started inviting people to our theater, and we would serve them dinner. And then we mm. would read the Quran to them, or we would read the message of the black man to them. So that way we started influencing people in a more positive and a more intellectual and intelligent way. And that's what uh, led me to understand and Islam was, I read the message to the black man in America. So I'm like, saying, well, okay, all praise due to Allah. That's the blessing right there for us, you know. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you uh, for your sacrifice and the entire sacrifice of your family. And I'm an actor as well, sir, who came up in the theater. Uh, my mother, my siblings, and I, we all we all in the theater as well. So that's good. I didn't know that you were in the theater as well. Praise be to Allah. Um, my, what I wanted to ask you was, what was it like in 1966, you accept, what was it like to be in LA and to be uh, a believer back then? Like who, who was in the mosque and how did the people receive you all? Well, to me, the mosque was very well structured. And the, the believers, I'm talking San Francisco in 1966, 67, and 1968. I'm from the LA area, San Fernando Valley of the LA area. So with uh, Brother Minister Majid, he was a very dynamic teacher. Yes, sir. And very clear on the teachers on Elijah Muhammad and the and the F the FOI was very strong and rigid and militant. And you know, these are the things that we were striving for in terms of gaining a better understanding of where we are, where we were at that time. Yes, sir. And being part of the real rise of the black man and woman in America. So that period of time from 1966 to 1968, because as a part of the theater, we uh, received uh, accommodations and invitations to go to different parts of uh, the West Coast. And one of the areas was Portland, Oregon. We went there and we did a whole summer, uh, we call it Black Summer, where we instructed young children on you know, on, on uh, uh, theater and and music and, and things, things of that nature in the cultural area of of, uh, of uh, Black folks' lives. So in 1969, I, I traveled back to San Francisco in, in the late part of 1968 and then on into, back into Los Angeles. And then when I was back in the Valley in Pocahontas, my brother knocked on my door and it was, it was, it was a lieutenant, right? And he said, oh yeah, brother, because my family is a come from a, a family of preachers. My yes, father had a staff in the church. So our family was known in that area. So by me being has stood up and accepted Islam, it was like a thing, right? So the brother said, yeah, brother, <laughs> yes, sir. You accepted Islam, just the lieutenant. Yeah, we heard you accepted the, the teachers, brother. So we need you to come on over to the mosque and get your load. <laughs> All praise to Allah. I submit yes, So I started story out there in the, the San Fernando Valley, Pacoima area of Los Angeles. And at that time we had the, uh, the illustrious uh, Captain Edward II X. Sorrell who later became Captain Edward Rashid, whoever became Imam uh, Rashid, Ali Rashid. And very dynamic brother. And he had the, the love of the men and there was a sister captain, sister, sister uh, Mamie Hutter, who learned to, to came to read your, your name. 
Sister Captain uh, Houghton Day Sharif. Mm -hmm. And they had a very tight ship of Muhammad Moss, number 27. Yes, sir. And it was really a blessing and great to see brothers, you know, my own age and brothers that were senior to me, the commitment that was to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And uh, when I first landed in back, back in Los Angeles, there was uh, Minister Bashir Muhammad was you know, minister for Los Angeles. And I remember the first time I, I heard him speak at the FOI class, it was a tremendous energy that the brother exuded, right? Yes, sir. Because of, again, that commitment and that understanding and, and that desire to convey the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to the men, you know, and to the mosque, to the people in the, in the mosque. Yes, sir. It require us to go into the community. And it worked. You know, that's what we did. Therefore, we got on, we was on the program with Honorable Elijah Muhammad one meal a day with the bean soup and, the, and the, the whole wheat muffin and maybe a little salad. And that was it. We adopted the life of the Muslim and the nation of Islam, the truth of Islam, and took care of, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> some water, John. Uh, that's a over We took care of our business according to, you know, uh, donating and bringing people to the mosque and. It was, it was, uh, it, it was and it is the thing to do. And, and uh, that's what we are today to continue, you know, to inspire, uh, to bear witness, which is you know, praise to Allah for the opportunity to bear witness for the Islam of God for me. And to to inspire young people, whichever way that we can, you know, as the Minister Farrakhan is, is showing us by his example. Excellent, sir, and thank you again. And you're getting a lot of love in the comments. My sisters are sending you greetings, Brother Joseph, your daughter, Sister Shima, Sister Valerie. So many people are sending you love. And thank you all for continuing to watch the People's Podcast. What I wanted to ask you, sir, is um, the West Coast during the, like, the 60s, Black Panthers, Nation of Islam, did you have any interactions with uh, the Black Panthers? And if so, how was that? OK, back to the theater. Uh, OK, yes, sir. If I may. One day, there was a brother in our, in our theater group called Carl Boissier, and he was from East Oakland. And he had four more brothers, and they, they were the Boissier brothers. But one day, Carl was a part of the theater group. He was an actor, one of the actors. Yes, one day he came, he said, my, uh, I'm born, right? Uh, Hillary Lee brought us. Uh, Hillary X is, is my, my, my ex. Yes, sir. One day he came, he said, hey, Hillary, man. It's these two brothers over the over the East Bay in Berkeley. They they are organizing some brothers, and they wanted to know if they could use the theater to organize the brothers on the San Francisco side. Of course, we well, said, yeah. Well, the brothers, you know, just Huey P. Newton and Bobby. He said, you know, Bobby, because Bobby Seal was a, one of the members of the theater group. Mm. So, yeah, I already knew Bobby. So they all came over to San Francisco. And they organized the Black Panther Party for self-defense in the Black Arts West Repertory Theater School. So we were aligned from that particular point of view. I never joined the Black Panther Party for self-defense because I had already stood up and wrote my letter. So that was a that was like in a very non non-negative sense, that was like a retrogression because of the fact that we've been moving forward with the teachers of the Arbalized Woman. Everybody got to come up to this where we are. And Huey and I, I personally took Huey P. Newton to the mosque on, on when the mosque was on Fillmore Street, and he heard the um, uh, Minister Lewis, I mean, excuse me, Minister Majid, Henry Majid. He heard the teachers of Alvarez Muhammad from Minister Henry Majid. So we have formed that alliance, and then we did a thing with uh, what you call uh, we had Black Power Conferences, which again spawned from the teachers of Alvarez Muhammad, uh, Brother Kwame Kure, which is formerly still called Kwame Michael May Allah be pleased with him. Yeah, he made popular the slogan that Ambrose Muhammad had brought to the forefront, Black Power. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Black Power Conference. So Black Lives West and, and uh, the Black Panther Party for self-defense, we were doing uh, 
black power conferences you know, throughout the Bay Area, along with people like uh, Cesar Chavez, Muhammad Ali, H. Rab Brown, who's the man, Jalil Alameen, you know, yes, th these, these brothers. Uh, uh, a variety of uh, artists, uh, writers uh, that uh, were aligned with us at that particular period in time, 1966. 67, 68, and many of them still, uh, you know, rolling, taking care of business in terms of the elevation of black folks in America. Praise be to Allah. And I want to, can't stress this enough, I want to thank you again for your sacrifice and the sacrifice of your family, sir. What was it like, um, I'm a history major, and it seems like when they show the footage of LA and the Watts Rebellion and the um, LAPD and fire hoses and just things of that nature, were you ever faced with fear? And if so, how did you overcome the fear of speaking the teachings, especially back then? Well, uh, one thing about fear is I learned is that we don't have a right to fear any but Allah. And sometimes we see the power of Allah in another individual. And we might see that feeling or emotion or that that fear, but if, when you understand that it, it don't belong to them, you got to fear Allah. My, my biggest fear is to displease Allah. I want to do what I can to find favor with Allah. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Well, what was it like? Yes, sir. Um, what was it like after 1975, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad departs? How did that impact you personally, and how did it impact your family? Well, I say this, which MGD's GCC sister, my ex-wife, she says, what do we, prior to the messenger passing, right? Yes, sir. Not passing, but leaving. Yes, sir. Prior to that particular point in time, she had asked me the question, what do we do? This is what she put it, so she said, if the, uh, when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad died, well, I wouldn't even think about Honorable Elijah Muhammad died because we, you know, we didn't even think Muslims died. We just knew that the law said we could live a thousand years. <laughs> you know. Yes, sir. So I said we continue to be Muslims. The program I already laid out. So you know, you know, that's one man. You know, yes, sir. praise due to Allah. Yes, sir. He brought it to us. You know, so we have to carry on that that work. You know, which is which is what it is. We have to carry on the work. And we all, I don't say we totally all, you find some brothers who say, no, I never was with that Wallace thing. However, for the masses, we did what we were supposed to do in that sense, wherever we were, we submitted. Yes, sir. That's yes. one of the messengers teaching. If a situation come up and there's some unclarity about it, submit. One of the basic tenets of Islam, that's what Islam means. That's what Islam means, submit. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So you submit. Everybody for the mass submitted to what took place at that particular point in time. So we kept the unity. But as time went on, as we know, a couple of years later, 1977, the seeds that were planted in the Honorable Louis Farrakhan began to grow. And he understood what he had to do and has done. So as time went on, well, in the transition, in 1975, I was in the student minister class at Muhammad's Mosque, number 27. Mm, mm. So as time went on, the transition, well, I was in the imam class at Muhammad's Mosque, number 27, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So then as time went on, began to realize that the messenger teachers need to be supported in terms of what Minister Farrakhan is doing. So you get back in the ranks. So that's mm. what took place as time went on. So it's a blessing to be yes, able to understand, you know, that but there's no the, the thing of it is we always talk about the fact, and that's what the messenger teaches to work with is actual facts. Yes sir. The fact that Chief Minister Wallace Muhammad took the realm of the nation of Islam and the direction in which he took it. 
And the fact that today there are still people who are with that direction. And the fact that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan stood back up in 1977 and has reestablished all praises due to Allah, the work of Allah. Allah Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. So facts, actual facts. And we recognize, and as we know, the Muslim world recognize the value and the necessity and the total uh, being of the nation of Islam in terms of the direction of the whole planet Earth. And we listen to Minister Farrakhan talk and the ministers, the student ministers speak. It's, it's about a universal, and of course in the, in the final call newspaper, it's a universal order, a universal peace. Yes, sir. Wherein we all can live together. Listen to that part. It's a universal peace. So whoever gonna be in peace is gonna live it. Whoever not in peace, they can't live in that because they're not in peace. That speaks to itself. Actual yes, fact, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So in terms of the from 1975 and what took place after that, what's going on right now today, we have an example, and that's why uh, the minister shows that the example that we have in terms of what we call Orthodox Islam or what we call Islam as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is that we we coexist in that sense of the fact that you want to look at it as being two entities, only one Allah, we know that. Yes, you know, sir, yes, sir. If, if people, for any one individual who want to look at two entities, then Minister Farrakhan used the expression that we haven't even blood in one another's nose, which is an example to the, what we call or so-called Orthodox Islam, where you have one brother on this side of Allah Akbar, another brother on the other side of Allah Akbar, they both shoot pistols at, at each other. You know? <laughs> yes, sir. So it's the vanguard, we use that term. And that's what the uh, Captain Rashid used to use a lot of time. Man, you're in the vanguard, man. This, this, this is the vanguard of the thing. You, you're out the front, you know, hold the line, brother. Yes, sir, you know? yes, sir. And that's important. You know, we have brothers all across the nation, or the United States, in, in, you know, the Caribbean, and Europe. You know, we, we are the trendsetters. So that, that word that, uh, uh, in, in the prayer about patience and time and the velocity, which Minister Farrakhan gave that that uh, what fifty eight week uh, uh, series on yes sir yes sir you know and it's it's really you know supersized blessing that we are alive right now in in this dispensation of time to see the word I use I'm gonna say I, I said earlier I'm gonna use this word burgeoning period of time that we being restored to our own. Allah well, walk by. You know, and just like just like the Crips and Bloods, they started in a particular place in the United States. Now you go all over in Scandinavia, you go all over in Europe, you got Crips and Bloods. So I'm showing you there, once again, the influence that the black man, unbeknownst to his own self, right? they didn't plan it like that, but that's the way it is. I use, yes, I use the term, I use the term of the people with the, uh, on the farm, you got the cow, right? You, you milk the cow, and then you start churning the milk. What happened? Well, the butter rise. So, well, you got something else that's more, more, uh, more uh, uh, rich than the butter, the cream. And that's where you come in with all the lies. I said, "Who is the tribe of Shabazz? You know, you know, we the cream of the planet Earth." And oh, but, but to see when you churn, when you're churning that milk, that takes time. Yes, sir. So we churn. However, as long as time, as long as you churn that milk over a period of time, the cream gonna rise to the top. Yes, sir. That's what I wanna say is inevitable. So that's the blessing that we have, you know, to have uh, uh, with the light of understanding, many call a few chosen. And then you wonder why your peer group that you grew up with and they can read just like you can read, right? Yes, sir. But yes, sir. They lag behind. But it's not. It's it's not a negative in the sense that they lag behind. It's a positive in the sense that you understand to move forward. Well, I walk by. And then they still see you. Fifty-five years later, you know, standing up with the same thing that you stood up with in your youth. You know. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Speaking of standing up. What was it like for you? Uh, can you give us your favorite memory of 
of being around or with the most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. With, with Minister Farrakhan? Yes, sir. The honorable Louis Farrakhan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I would say that uh, I believe it was in Oakland that uh, he was speaking at a venue in Oakland. Then I was blessed to share the table with the minister after that particular venue. And then after the venue, then we all were had an opportunity to you know shake the minister's hand. And I, I didn't know what to say. Yeah, you know, what I'm gonna say. He, he says everything. But uh, yes, what came out of my mouth is brother minister, we have a lot of work to do. And I believe he said, Yes, brother, we have a lot of work to do. And to me, that was just uh, all that was necessary to be said. Because we do have a lot of work to do. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, my next question for you, sir, is um, Dr. Collett came out of the, um, he was very popular when he became the uh, West Coast Regional Minister uh, for some time. And did you, could you let us know what it was like to work with in uh, Dr. Collett? Dr. Collett, yes, sir, absolutely. Yes, sir. I remember Dr. Collett essentially, you know, when when he came in and he was just a dynamic brother. He had a great love for black people. He had a great love for the teachers of the Armour Lodge Muhammad, he had a great a love for respect of a minister. And like Minister Farquhar said openly in public at a venue a few years ago, he said if Dr. Collar was alive, he would be standing with me right now. Okay. Yes. But I remember one time at Madison Square Garden with Dr. Collar and I, it was, uh, you know, uh, New Yorkers come out for Minister Farrakhan anyway, right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. They came out, you know, and they think the tickets was like $20 or something like that. They paid the $20, people coming up with two and $3,000. I'm, 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 I'm not being, I'm exaggerating, but a great a lot of money. I got yes, 15 sir. people out here. Here's their money. Let us in, right? Yes, sir. Well, you can't let so many people in, according to the fire department. Yes, sir. But the people wanted to come in so bad to hear Minister Farrakhan, to be a part of that spirit, of understanding, and to drive forward the momentum of the black folks in America, that it was like a surge. It wasn't, it wasn't a it wasn't a violent thing, but it was a surge, and the people just surged right through the doors, right through the glass doors. <laughs> Me and Brother Collin trying to keep. We had the doors closed, but we couldn't stop the people from the glass from caving in. So mm, we just said, mm. let the door open the door, let the people in. <laughs> let the people come and hear the medicine, just did the best we could to maintain it. It was peaceful, you know. Praise me to uh, What could you, you know, let we, us know? Uh, we shared Sir? No, I was gonna ask us your favorite Everybody? memory, your favorite memory with Dr. Collin. That was probably about the favorite one when we had to just let all the people run in. Yes, sir. Because they wanted to hear the bark on. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And what was it like? Um, your son sent me some pictures that I used for the flyer to promote it. And I saw you with uh, Johnny Cochran. What was that experience like? Um, the OJ Simpson trial, such a big trial. Uh, they still talk about it to this day, even though it happened in 1994, so many years ago. Uh, what was it like doing secu uh, security for Johnny Cochran? What was it like? To, uh, beg your pardon? What was it like doing security for Johnny Cochran? What was it like to do what, brother? Do security for Johnny Cochran. Oh. Well, uh, see, we're talking about essence of time, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And some may, some may not know. During that period of time, Calvin Rodas was on trial in the same courthouse that Johnny Cocker was on, side, on trial. Mm, 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 mm. And who was with him? Snoop Dogg, Tupac, Suge Knight, and a bunch of the other people in the crew, right? So every day we could see each other. You know, they go up to their courtroom, and John, uh, Mr. John Attorney Cochran go to his courtroom. And the thing of it is, like every time you see these brothers, they like we embrace each other's like 
long last lost brothers. We just see it, which is actual mm. facts. Mm. Once mm. again, everybody realizing the respect that we need to have for each other, irregardless of what the circumstances are. You know, uh, one time I was in Johnny Cochran's office, and the governor of California called him. Now the governor called Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran gonna call the governor. Pick up on this, like James Brown would say. Johnny Cochran did all the talking. All I mean, I don't think, I don't think the only thing the, the governor was Brown was the governor Brown at that time. He was said was hello and goodbye. Mm -hmm. So that was the dynamics in the man. But prior to that, Johnny Cochran, right? Yes, sir. Prior to doing the. Uh, actual security form, I had an opportunity to, to interface with him on, a, on another situation. Mm. And we were in the courthouse, not just one courthouse, it went to about three different courthouses. Mm. Each mm. of those courthouses, when he walked in, Cochran's here, Johnny Cochran's here, he started whispering through the halls, and pretty soon the judges in those courthouses were shutting their courtrooms down to go and see wherever Johnny Cochran was. Mm, to come mm. see what he was saying, or who he was defending, blah, blah, blah. So he had a, a great love and respect from his colleagues in, you know, in the Los Angeles area and international. But uh, I was, we were blessed as a crew from the FOI to be able to uh, take care of him and his family. Mm -hmm. Yes, and sir, we, sir. it was coordinated nationwide. Your daddy know. Yes, sir. It was coordinated nationwide. <laughs> yes, sir. And it was it was a, it was a successful. Crazy there so were wild. some things that were discovered that had not if they had not been discovered, it would have been blown up out of you know in terms of everybody knowing about it. But you know. so all that comes from the training. That's what your, your dad would say. Make all men and boys F-O-Y. <laughs> yes, that's sir. He said. And that's what needed to be done. Praise be to all the that was with us at that period of time uh, received that training from, from your dad. Praise be to a lot. Yes, sir. What, um, another picture was Mike Tyson. He's, he's my favorite fighter of all time. What was it like being around him? Mike Tyson. What was it like being around Mike Tyson? Mike, Mike. Brother, brother Mike, brother. Right. He was a great brother to work for. Mm. Uh, he ran into some, we call it Jaheim. He ran into some hell, right? During the yes. time that I was working for him. And when we first started out in uh, 1996, it was like seven people on the crew. You know, we alternate really, when he moved. You know, everybody moves with certain times, it just be one person with him. He ran into that Jaheim, that hell, with the boxing commission. He didn't want to with him. Mm. They said, Mike, you got to keep somebody with you. Well, once again, here come, he said, I'll pick Abdullah. So I was blessed for 18 months straight. 24-7, and always Okay. Yes, sir, we're right here, and thank you all for your patience, and thank you. Did we lose each other? Yes, sir, we're right here with you. So you said 24-7, you were Mike Tyson. We're right here with you, sir. He's, he's a great, a very generous brother, very, mm. very generous and very thoughtful. And I'm looking at what he's doing right now in terms of providing a platform for some of the other people in his peer group and in the boxing, the pug pugilistic uh, arena. Yes, sir. It's it's a good thing, and that's that's the type of man, type of man that he is. You know, excellent. He's concerned about other people. 
Wonderful. I have just a few more questions for you, sir. But before we get uh, finished, I ask you those questions. I have a quick 60 second uh, commercial because I want to uh, do a quick 60 second commercial break to all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. I thank you very much as we get ready to come right back uh, to our brother Abdullah. Um, here we go. Please cash app the People's Podcast on um, uh, on Cash App, dollar sign the People's Podcast. We appreciate all of the sponsors, starting with uh, my brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. They have a 4K camera, drone. They work on television and movie and film editing. Thank you very much. My sister Miriam's children's book, ABC I Love Me and Coloring Book, both of which are on Amazon. Thank you very much, Sister Miriam. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. Thank you very much. Uh, Supreme Men's and Boys Urban Wear out of St. Louis, Missouri. If you all want some good uh, clothes to be fresh, reach out to our brother. He's going to keep you dripping. Raising Black Millionaires, Sister Tia Muhammad. She teaches economic empowerment to young Black children through um, flashcards. And she also has a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Shout out to her new YouTube channel. I just subscribed. Um, Brother Kenneth Muhammad, bow tie maker extraordinaire. Um, he makes some of the best bow ties in the world and he'll ship, ship them to you all across the country. Thank you, Brother Kenneth. Brother Todd X McGraw, Supreme Team Insurance Group. If you need some top-notch insurance, please reach out to our brother. I'm coming right back to you, Brother Abdullah. Um, Brother Chantil X, the X and Express. He hires truck drivers and they specialize in refrigeration all across the country. Thank you very much, sir. Brother Jabbar Muhammad, client first construction, painting, carpentry, flooring, plumbing, et cetera, in the Chicago area and in the Memphis, Tennessee area as well. Thank you very much. Reach out to him if you need any of these um, services. I'm coming right back to you, sir. Navy beans, more than bean pies. It's Alondra El Muhammad. Thank you very much. Let's make sure we support our sister. Uh, Dr. Henry M. Carter, Turkey Legs, King Henry Turkey Legs right here in Atlanta, Georgia. And we are right back to our guest right now, mm -hmm. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, mm -hmm. abdusharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is on Amazon, and No Father, No Excuse, which is on Amazon mm -hmm. as well. Thank you very much. All right, we're right back to you, Brother Ab Abdullah. And thank you all very much for watching. Okay, yes, sir. What advice would you give to future fathers, sir? Yes, sir. What advice would you give to future fathers? One more time, brother, please. What advice would you give to future fathers? The most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad he teaches us the minister from the minister of our kind of guidance that humility is the secret to greatness. And submission is the key to the universe. And with the supreme wisdom that we've been blessed to, you know, they talk about somebody with a, with a silver spoon, which is way greater than anybody's silver spoon, but with the wisdom of the universe and the wisdom of the ages, What's one of the main things that we need to keep is the humility and out in front of us and the submission. Because as a parent, our children watch us in, in ways that we don't realize all the time. Yes, we I want do. them to watch us, but sometimes it's things that we may not realize they're watching us and, and they are. And just be mindful of ourselves and our duty and. Uh, be kind, you know, we have to be patient with each other and especially with children. Another thing about children is uh, we need to keep our word, a word to them, you know, uh, and we have to be consistent, consistent with children. You know, they, they look for us for, they look to us for food, clothing and shelter. You know, that's, that's a given, but then the, you know, the moral support and the emotional support. And sometimes we can be overburdened on, on a child, you know, and so we need to rec recognize the parameters of the child and work with them. But 
they we know that people some people say we're born into the world knowing everything we just have to discover it you know yes sir yes sir so we it's a great it's a great honor right to to raise children and uh, even today at minister farcon and issues us to adopt children mm -hmm. you know like children you know, because it's an honor to raise a child yes sir yes sir and we want to be the best example that we can for the society as a whole and at the same time we we have to grow into that example you know so it's it's about practice makes perfect you know the, our life and our death are all for a law on him do we rely you know associate has he yes so sir. when our children see that in our actions and our life then that's what we respond s-p-a-w-n we respond in them you know that they life and their death will be on all for a law and on him they will rely and that's that's the great achievement for us that our children will follow suit with the knowledge that we have. And that's why it's important to show uh, physical manifestations in terms of businesses, you know, farms, yes, sir. Uh, you know, different, different physical manifestations of success and that the teachings grow in us, you know, because just like what you're doing right now, it's, 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 just, it's, a, it's a level of success in the in the community that uh, that a young brother is, is taking charge and showcasing in in this sense I, uh, is his elders you know Great. as well as his, his peer group and you know this is what it's about. It's what other this is what other people do. Uh, we we encourage to look at the Jewish community and how they how they handle their business, their family business. When a crisis occurs in the marriage, here come the mother and the father of the on both sides of the in laws. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Down and you know they go over things. You know these are things that we're going to have to be more more mindful of and 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 implement. You know and and our in our domestic life, you know, in order to keep each other strong. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. How how has been um, being a grandfather? What is that like being like you being a grandfather now? Well, it's a it's a great thing. It, it's a great thing, and you you have to realize that well, once again, uh, what is the example? That, that you're setting for your grandchildren. What do they see of you? Well, you don't want to see nothing fake, you know, but you want to be for real in terms of them understanding what life is about. This dispensation of time for the original family, and especially the, I read something the other day about the, they talked about the diaspora and the African. Well, we all know that it's not about Africa, no way, it's about Asia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Being everlasting, the everlasting original man. And our grandchildren, male and female, realizing about the original family of the planet Earth. And as Minister Farquhar and the, the, the student ministers are elucidating about our planet, you know, you know, what, what we are doing to secure the original people on our planet. And as just this past Sunday, uh, uh, Brother, Brother uh, National Assistant, Brother Student Minister Ismail, the actual facts and statistics, you know, that he brought out. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Regarding the species of people on the planet and how it go, this how it go. You know, like in a lump, this how it go, this how it is. Yes, sir. You know, and that's where your humility come in, you know. That's where your submission come in, not to take that, ah ha ha, but to take that 
And I, 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 they say Babylon could have been saved, but she wasn't. Well, we we got to save our people. You know, we got to save our people. And Praise me so a lot, beautiful. In terms of being a grandparent, it's not necessarily, we, you, you look at the, the what is it, the, the movie with, with Anthony Quinn, uh, Omar Mukda, when they say that uh, the young men are for war and old men are for counsel. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But uh, that brother, he wasn't, he was an old man, but he was right there at war. <laughs> you know, it was Farrakhan. He's, he's at war. He's not sitting back. He counseled and he wars. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. That, that might slow down, but you shouldn't let it slow you down. You know, you keep you keep the faith and recognize that the energy comes from Allah and you keep you keep on going day and night, night and day. Yes, sir. Know, because uh, the battle not given to the swift or to the strong, right? But to those who do it to the end. So that's what we ask Allah for the strength and the guidance for the young people to be able to see. And I find that I find that a lot. I, people talk about young black people and young black men. I see, uh, I interface with a lot of young black men. I, I get a lot of respect from young black men because that's their nature. That's our nature to respect Allah, we respect the nature, respect the sun, the moon and the stars. That's our nature. So what's yes, happening I is we being restored, as you know, being restored back to our nature. And that's one of the most important things of today that your grant that you can keep in the front of your grandchildren that it's a process that we're in. You know, it's the process began 90 years ago, but we're still in it. And we're going to continue to be in, you know, and it's a blessing, you know, to be a part of it. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And I want to make sure I thank you again for your sacrifice, sir, and your sacrifice of your family. What what do you do for fun? Well, the greatest fun that I have is the distribution of the Final Call newspaper. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. Because yes, that sir. Way I know that what I'm talking about is being shared. And like we always talk about the Muhammad Speaks and the Final Call newspaper, you might distribute the person, the paper to one individual. However, seven other individuals would be able to uh, read that newspaper and, and absorb the knowledge and and become uh, infected by the knowledge so that they, we all can do better. And uh, that's important. That was that was one of the things that, that uh, now, because we have so many intellectuals in the nation of Islam, the, the messenger said the first that would come would be, you know, a certain class of so-called class of people. But as time went on, you would get People with higher education, lawyers, some of the pictures that uh, that the messenger used to have in the the uh, animated graphic uh, cartoon type pictures that that messenger would have in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, showing the society with uh, uh, new innovations, a modern uh, type of futuristic type of architecture and uh, farming. Uh, to me, serving serving the people is, is the is the greatest fun in terms of the reality of one today. Excellent. And do you listen to music, sir? Did you hear me, sir? I said, do you listen to music? No, sir, say it again. I said, does he listen to music? I was asking, does he listen to music? You say what now? One more time. Yes, sir. What type of music do you listen music? to? Yes, sir. Oh, I listen to all kind of music. Uh, okay. You know, I, I'm a jazz, a jazz enthusiast. I, I listen to classical. I listen to the R&B. I listen to hip hop. I like all kind of music. Uh-huh. <clears throat> The, the power is in the word and the message is in the yes, music. Sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, we, as, as Muslim followers of Allah Muhammad, we, we cover all the spectrums. <laughs> we, we, we don't leave no stone unturned. That's just 
That's just the way that it is. Yeah, I, I listen to all kind of music. I listen to country and western. I, I listen to bluegrass. Hey, I listen okay. To all of it. Beautiful, excellent. And I thank you all for the comments and a lot of people showing you love in the comments, sir. Um, Oh, um, your daughter, uh, Sister Shima, said that you can sing in the comments. Boom, so the comments, boom. Excellent. I don't know that you can sing. All right, thank you, Sister Shima. Okay, my, I have one more question for you, sir. What, what would you like your legacy to be? The greatest legacy that I could live, leave is that I live uh, the life that uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, under the guidance of Minister Louis Farrakhan, have lined out for us, and that I, at the end, have the respect of the mighty fruit of Islam with the nation of Islam. Oh, wow. If I have that, at the end, I'm all right. And I would just like to say this, I'm humble, deeply grateful, and I'm very uh, thankful you know, for you as a, as a brother for providing this form for us. Praise be to Allah. The honor is mine, sir. We um, we stand on the foundation that you helped lay, and it's an honor that you would spend take time out of your busy schedule to come have a conversation with us and inspire the next generations that are, came, that are coming after you, inshallah, to be strong in our faith. And um, you are a great example of that. And shout out to your, uh, your family and all of their sacrifices for... Um, I, mean, I see your grandchildren, I see you, I see you, your son, your daughters. It's just, y'all have an amazing family. That means a lot to well, us. Just like Minister Farrakhan says, we're all of the best generation that, that we have produced. And like the Holy Quran says that we go on and on and stage and stage into perfection. All praise to Allah. Praise be to Allah. And Brother Amir says, you got it, Uncle. Original salute. Sister Valerie says, great interview. And I want to put this on YouTube. Please like, share, subscribe to the People's Podcast. And thank you very much, Brother Jami, for you uh, being the connection and the plug on this. And thank you to your family as well. May Allah continue to bless you, sir. Assalamu alaikum. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you all for watching.